This is Theory of Change. I'm Matthew Sheffield. Thanks for being here. We've got a great program for you today. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to remind everybody that Theory of Change is part of the Flux Media Network. So go to flux.community for more articles and podcasts about politics, religion, media, and technology, and how they all intersect, and also the larger trends within each of these fields of human activity. And if you like what we're doing here, I would please encourage you to share the show with your friends and family. Let other people know about it. Um, give them your favorite episode. And maybe it's this one, or maybe it's another one. Who knows? Um, just have them go to theoryofchange.show, and you can also become a paid subscriber to get full access to video, audio, and transcript of every episode. So please do check that out. All right, so with that little plug out of the way, let us get into today's program. Today's program is going to be the first in a series of in-depth explorations about the politics of different states in the United States and how unfortunately right-wing extremism is becoming more common in many states in America. And the first one we're going to be talking about today is Idaho. Idaho is one of America's most beautiful states with amazing mountains and lakes, lush forests and gorgeous fields and plains. Unfortunately, it is also home to many of America's most insane people as well. And there is a lot of history and unfortunately a lot of contemporary action going on with that regard. And so today we're pleased to be joined by Marty Kelly. He is a senior editor with the Wonkette Humor blog. And he's also a very long-term resident of Idaho since 2001. Um, so welcome to Theory of Change, Marty. Good to be here. All right, great. So um, there's a, yeah, the Idaho obviously has a very long history and we'll, uh, we'll get into that. But Let's maybe start off with, I think it's fair to say that Idaho kind of has sort of three basic political divisions, uh, political regions. The northern part tends to be extremely radical and uh, filled with uh, white nationalists and um, all assorted religious extremists as well. Um, the central part of Idaho, which is kind of the Sun Valley area, which includes Boise, which is where you live, and uh, other areas around there. Um, that is basically the area I'm calling the business and Berkeley section of Idaho, <laughs> where all the money's made and all, where all the godless commies like yourself live. Um, and then in the Both Southeast, we, we have the, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you said what? Both of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then in the Southeast uh, part of Idaho, that is the heavily Mormon region of the state. Um, and there's, uh, when we'll get into that, but uh, Mormonism in Idaho also has some very interesting divisions of its own. So you uh, moved to Idaho in 2001 uh, after getting a PhD in uh, rhetoric and composition from the University of Ar Arizona. Sorry, ah, now see, I got that wrong. <laughs> um, all right, so you moved to Idaho in 2001 after getting a PhD in rhetoric and composition uh, at University of Arizona. Um, so. Uh, what brought you to Idaho? Well, my uh, now ex uh, got a job at uh, Boise State uh, University, where she is uh, still teaching and uh, tenured and uh, doing amazing things with uh, ESL composition and writing. And um, I've stayed because we have a kid together uh, who's now 26, and I can't believe that that happened. Um, and uh, since about 2012, I've been uh, writing for the uh, political humor blog, uh, Wonkat, my dream job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. I can do that anywhere, uh, and Boise's a good, affordable place to stay. Yeah, it certainly is uh, definitely a lot uh, cheaper than many parts of the country, for sure. Um, and, you know, all kinds of great outdoor activities, as I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, yeah, I've also filled with lots of at least the state is. Bo Boise itself also is actually a pretty nice place to be. I have to say to anybody who hasn't checked it out, you should definitely put it on your bucket list. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, um, but now you're, uh, you were n not born in the region, but for, you were born nearby in uh, Washington, right? That's uh, in right. Oregon. Yeah. On the Oregon, Oregon coast. Sorry. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so, um, and, and it should be noted, I think, you know, in, recent 
past couple of years, um, Idaho has unfortunately gotten some attention for a lot of different right wing extremist stuff. Oh, yes. uh, especially with uh, different people trying to move in and ban books and et cetera. But there's unfortunately a longer history than that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, I guess probably, you know, probably the, the at least it, we'll, we'll start with the 20th century, I guess, kind of the most famous mm -hmm. Idaho right wing extremist was Ezra Taft Benson, who was a native son from Rexburg, I believe. Um, and he was the, rose to become the uh, agriculture secretary of Dwight Eisenhower mm -hmm. and then um, was a big conduit for people into the John Birch Society um, and and also was a big publicizer of another guy. Now, he was uh, Cleon Skousen. I believe he was from Utah. Uh, but, you know, they were both part of this fringe um, sect of, you know, extremely right wing Mormons. Um, and those people have always had a home and unfortunately all parts of Idaho, but <laughs> particularly in the in the southeast. Um, but, you know, as we kind of move toward more times when people watching or listening or have been alive, because um, <laughs> uh, I believe it, Benson was born in 1899, if I remember mm. right. Uh, so needless to say, that was a while ago. But uh, more contemporaneously, Idaho um, became the focus of national attention in 1992 with Randy Weaver. Uh, tell us about who Randy Weaver was. Well, Randy Weaver was a um, very extreme survivalist uh, right-wing fellow who uh, showed up from time to time at the Aryan Nations compound in uh, northern Idaho. And uh, thank goodness, they eventually got shut down in a lawsuit with the SPLC. Uh, but in 92, Weaver was, uh, I think the feds were trying to arrest him on charges of uh, selling a sawed off shotgun illegally. And there was the siege at Ruby Ridge. And uh, during that, his wife and son were killed. Uh, you can go to the Idaho State uh, Historical Society, and at their museum, they have the front door with the bullet hole in the glass, which is something to see. And then, of course, after that siege was over, um, he, he the charges fell apart, and uh, it became a rallying point for the uh, entire right wing, led to uh, the Waco uh, occupation and siege and... Uh, then that led to Timothy McVeigh. Then shortly after, we had uh, Idaho Congresswoman Helen Chenoweth, who was already very, very popular with the militia folks and supporting them, who said that uh, Oklahoma City was, was the wrong thing to do, but it was certainly understandable. And that was kind of the end of her career, thank goodness. Uh, you can still see cars around Boise with... Uh, uh, bumper stickers that say uh, "Can Salmon Not Helen Not uh, Can Helen Not Salmon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and I guess she kind of has a a spiritual successor nowadays in Janice McGeehan. Um, tell us about who who she is. She uh, there's is, a lot of stories. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. she has lots of spiritual successors now. Uh, Janice McGeehan was the Lieutenant Governor of Idaho when Butch. Otter was governor. And the two in Idaho, the lieutenant governor and governor are elected separately. And so they are not a ticket. So she was constantly trying to uh, do weird right wing things whenever he would leave the state. <laughs> and uh, at one point during the COVID uh, emergency, he went to a conference somewhere while she was acting governor for a day, she tried to rescind all um, COVID measures, all mask mandates. And uh, it was, uh, she, she got a talking to when he came back. And then she did it again the next time he was out of the state. Yeah. Um, and she also became famous for her campaign ads featuring flags and Bibles and, and right, guns. Right. She was and, in a notorious video sponsored by the Idaho Freedom Foundation, which we'll mention again, 
uh, soon where they sang a little, I think it was the Idaho anthem. I honestly don't know. They sang a song together and in her part of it, uh, she was seen in a camouflaged um, four by four holding a gun and a Bible. Yeah, which um, has, you know, quite a lot of visual similarities to ISIS videos. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Everyone noted that at the time. Yeah, uh, although, you know, it, it, there was another woman who uh, had been featured in this, uh, photographed herself in a similar way, a younger woman. And oh, right. People, and I forget what her name was, but people, uh, she posted it somewhere and, and she soon became a meme. And then she actually said, I don't know why people are doing this. Um, she, right, because it's totally yeah. different. Different flag, different holy book. That's right. Heck, different even God. different yeah. guns. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, and you know, and one other person who um, kind of may not quite as uh, nationally infamous as as McGeehan um, is Bo Greitz. Um, he uh, was a, a guy who uh, he actually ran for president um, as an independent candidate. Um, he was another one of these uh, Utah, Idaho Mormons, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was involved. He had his own compound, kind of, I believe, not too far away from where Randy Weaver had his. Mm -hmm. um, if you live he, in Idaho, you have to have a compound. Uh, yeah, apparently, mm -hmm. the, everybody's either in Boise or in a compound. So. Yeah, mine's rented. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, and I think I think it's, uh, and this is a subject we'll come back to at the end, but I think, you know, part of the kind of divide for a lot of people is that because there are so many vast open areas of Idaho where just nobody's there, uh, you know, that's just, you know, you can drive for, you know, up maybe an hour and not see another car on the road, mm. um, and depending on where you're at. And, um, you know, and then at the same time, they are not, you know, if you drive a little bit further, you'll come into a, a, a you know, modern um, Western city like Boise. Mm -hmm. And it can be kind of jarring, I think, to some of these people. It seems like, you know, I, it's I, I, one thing about right wing extremism that I think people who haven't don't have a firsthand exposure to it is that, you know, all, so much of it is psychological. Mm -hmm. um, it's not political. It's just seeing a that other people have a different way of living and it's, and it's wrong horrifying. that's right <laughs> and it's wrong <laughs> i mean and that's kind of i mean that's kind of a i mean a large part of what you guys write about it at wonket is mm -hmm. sort of highlighting that type of behavior uh from these right-wing figures and um you know and, and it's unfortunate because i mean you I mean, you, you. Well, I guess I'll let you say, speak to it. But I mean, it seems to me that you know the National Republican Party is basically kind of, and not just with Trump, but like you know, over time becoming ever more like these people who were like Bogrites who were kind of laughing stocks mm -hmm. in the '90s. Um, nowadays, you know, I mean, I don't, he's probably like 90 or something, so uh, probably not doing much nowadays. But you know. <laughs> Uh, somebody like him, like uh, another uh, Iowan, uh, Ammon Bundy, um, you know, is, I know, they have a constituency there. Um, yeah, a constituency. Yeah, very much so. We've um, it's it's a small, radical, annoying, but strangely powerful sometimes a uh, bunch of crazies. Yeah. Well, and I, I mentioned Ammon Bundy. Um, so his he comes from a whole family. Um, let's talk about them. You want to give the background on those guys? <laughs> well, the Bundys are uh, some Mormon fundamentalists who have a vision of the coming apocalypse. What is it? The the white horse something or other? Oh I... yeah, yeah. So yeah, more so more. There was a, a Mormon prophecy from Joseph Smith that. Uh, the, the 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 male priesthood holders of Mormonism are going to save the United States, right? Uh, right. And that there will be someone who will emerge <laughs> as if um, uh, there will be someone who will emerge as if riding on a white horse, and he will sweep in to become the president and save America right before uh, the destruction of the wicked. Yes, yes. And uh, Cliven was into that, and I think Ammon even more so. I, I honestly don't know the 
Cliven being the father. Cliven being the father who had the uh, standoff in Nevada. And then Ammon ran the uh, standoff in Oregon at the uh, wildlife refuge and escaped, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, escaped criminal charges in uh, both of those. Um, in Nevada, because the FBI completely screwed up its prosecution and uh, didn't share, I, as I recall, didn't share inf important information during discovery, so it got thrown out. And then in the Oregon case, they were all basically let off because the jury, as if you ask me, the jury just nullified the case. They didn't want to prosecute them. Yeah, which, you know, and it's funny considering how much they um, claim to be upset at uh, rioting and looting by Black Lives Matter. Um, <laughs> well, you know, here's some law and order you guys could have done. And, well, didn't exactly do it. <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's still okay to shoot federal um, uh, cops because they're wrong. They don't have the right to, to enforce laws. And, in fact, no parts of the... Uh, Federal, the, the federal government isn't allowed to have uh, land outside of Washington, D.C. and military bases. It's a special yeah. copy of the Constitution that belongs to the Bundys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and I guess, yeah, that, you know, that's those ideas kind of come out of this um, sovereign citizen movement. Right, right. Um, Combination of and, the sovereign citizen and the, the mm -hmm. Sagebrush Rebellion stuff. Yeah, well... Um, yeah, and, and basically they have this idea that uh, they don't have to pay taxes um, as well because um, the United States is actually, uh, was uh, as a government, was ended secretly. And I always forget the year that they... I believe it was uh, with the 14th uh, Amendment in um, 1865, was that it was? Okay. 67, whenever that was. Of course it has something to do with slavery, right? <laughs> right yeah, yeah. And then we, and then the U S became a corporation and we are all owned by the government until we put a uh, legal notice up that uh, we are now free persons and we don't belong to the government anymore. And that's never held up in court and they keep doing it year after year. Yep. But uh, it makes a lot of money for the people who, who tell you, you can it's a great scam. <laughs> It is. If I didn't um, have a, if I didn't have any sense of ethics at all, I can make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I guess you know what though. You guys do have at least one uh, another positive thing, a positive thing you guys are known for, which is uh, Napoleon Dynamite. That's uh, true. That's true. We have the tots. <laughs> That's right. And uh, when you know they they should have they should have said uh, what high school Uncle Rico had his uh, his. Uh, his football career. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as somebody who grew up in, in Utah, which has a lot of the same geography and, and characteristics, I was just like, oh man, this was my childhood on the silver mm -hmm. screen. <laughs> uh, at least the minus the, the fundamentalist Mormonism parts. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, all right. So with the, so that's kind of, I don't know, like a rogues gallery, if you will, of, of famous right wing uh, Idahoans. But I guess uh, before we get into get beyond that, though, let's um, I did want to mention. So uh, we, we've talked about Mormonism in the Idaho context a little bit. Um, and it's kind of interesting for people who are not from Idaho or, or not Mormon is that Idaho kind of it's got the, the Mormons in Idaho are kind of split with each other um, mm. that. Uh, so, for instance, uh, there is uh, the, the Brigham Young University, which most people know of, is in Provo, Utah. Uh, but then there's also one in Rexburg, Idaho, called Brigham Young University, Idaho, uh, it's formerly known as Rex College uh, after the town. Um, and, and, or sorry, Ricks, I'm sorry, Ricks College. Um, and uh, Ricks slash BYUI um, has always been kind of like the more fundamentalist version of. Brigham Young University. Um, so, like for instance, you're not allowed to wear shorts on campus um, if you go to Brigham Young University, Idaho. Whereas, in fact, you can have the distinct pleasure of wearing shorts if you go to Provo, Utah, Brigham Young University. <laughs> Provo sounds like it's a little weak on doctrine there. 
Yeah, although I, 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 they've, I've never seen them where they claim what book of scripture says you can wear shorts. I don't know that <laughs> one. And, and last I heard, I believe they also don't allow open-toed sandals um, at, at BYU-Idaho. Well, um, as is only correct. That's right. You know, a toe cleavage. <laughs> <That's a shame. laughs> well, yeah, like you, you, you go there enough and no one has ever even heard of the term toe cleavage. <laughs> but apparently it, it does exist and it's evil. It's evil. Well, that's and obvious. Be careful of it. That's right. Yeah. So um, I can but, identify I grew up Catholic. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so but so the thing, though, about yeah Idaho Mormons is that they're it, I, they kind of you know, because of the remoteness, I guess, maybe, or who knows what it was. Uh, the Idaho Mormons have always been a little bit weirder um, than the Utah Mormons. And that's, and, and it's funny for people who have never lived in either of the states. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? How are they? <laughs> people cannot believe that there's any difference, but in fact, there is people. Uh, and if, and everybody who's watching this, who's, who's from Utah, you, you can back me up on this, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, and so, uh, but like they've, I don't know, it's like a lot of the, the there, there's the, this fringe Mormon movement in Idaho, what they call it, uh, uh, it's a website called uh, the LDS Freedom Forum is what they call it. And uh, oh, it's full of all kinds of uh, fringe Mormons who love uh, Ezra Taft Benson and um, Clive and Bundy and, you know, pretty much all these other uh, mm -hmm. people. And they've been very angry about uh particularly lately about covid and um, vaccines which the the mainstream lbs church has actually been very uh, positive about those mm -hmm. things and um utah as you, as you mentioned in our pre-show chat was uh, one of the the highest vaccinated states um because uh, but yeah i guess apparently not idaho is that right not so much idaho no it's funny because the the mainstream mormon Pol political establishment, uh, Butch Otter, uh, the current governor, uh, Brad Little, whose name isn't nearly as much fun, they tend to be pretty reasonable. And it's bizarre, actually, just I didn't know until talking to you that I, that there is this more radical Mormon subculture here, and I didn't even notice it, uh, although I, I give it a moment of thought, then yeah, sure, Ammon and his followers. But uh, when I think of Idaho Mormons, I tend to think of the uh, respectable right-wing Republicans uh, who make up one of the two major parties here, uh, the other being the batshit lunatics from northern Idaho. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's true. And, and like that was, um, yeah, it's, you know, Mormonism uh, really is kind of the Republican Party in miniature, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in that it's made of you know business people who just want to make money. It's made of people who just want to sing the hymns in church, uh, and then it's made of people who are completely fucking nuts uh, <laughs> who hate everyone else. <laughs> so it's diversity, is what it is. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and and I guess uh, you know the the people that are completely nuts though they have been really getting agitated um, lately with all of this, um, with, especially with uh, the COVID pandemic, and so the right wing in Idaho has been growing particularly agitated um, because of the pandemic and um, vaccines and other things like that recently. But one of the other things that they've been interested in is the idea of Greater Idaho. Um, tell us about <laughs> Greater Idaho. Greater Idaho is the brainchild of uh, this guy in Oregon named um, Mike McCarter, who thinks that it would be a really terrific idea for the right-wing counties of Oregon, and maybe a few in Washington, to join up with Idaho and uh, become a new state. It would be basically everything from the anything outside the influence of the Portland and Eugene areas in Oregon would join with Idaho. And then we'd have one big right wing state that would have uh, basically the uh, they, they think it would be an advantage because 
there wouldn't really be any change in Congress because Greater Idaho would still just have two right-wing senators, uh, and Oregon would what was left of Oregon would still have its uh, Democrats. <laughs> And uh, they have actually held non-binding referendums in something like 10 counties where it has passed, uh, which basically doesn't mean anything because the legislatures of both Idaho and Oregon would have to sign off on it. Then Congress would, and then the president would. So it's not really going to happen, but it is, it's, it's a brainchild, it's a favorite idea of some right-wing nutters. Uh, they also think that it's important to prevent uh, Boise from ever getting enough electoral power that it becomes something like Portland. So if you bring in all the right wingers from Oregon and Washington into this one state, then there's no chance that the state capital will ever be able to outvote them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And. Um, and then, and I'm trying to remember, I don't think they've done a vote, any votes in Washington, have they? I don't, I don't believe so. I, I haven't actually kept up with that. I do know that a few years ago uh, in... Oh, and I guess one, some of them, and some people are talking about some California counties as well. Oh, right, right. Yeah, there are some people who also, also want to include some of, <clears throat> some of the counties in Northern California. Basically, that would be the this would like override the state of what is it that they wanted to call Jefferson, it? Jefferson. Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is an alternative to Jefferson that would be even bigger. Yeah. Bigger, and better. <laughs> <laughs> bigger and crazier. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, and, but, and, and if I'm, and they also don't, uh, they're so trying to make these other counties be part of Idaho but then also they don't seem to have a plan for paying for the governmental structures that are owned. They wouldn't need to because it would be small government and everyone would take care of the <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. like the hospitals, nobody would use those. And right. schools, no one would use those. <laughs> well, it would be enough of a tax pay uh, base to, to pay for the basics. Um, <laughs> like, uh, and they could all home against Russia. Uh, I'm not against Russia, uh, against Canada, probably. Well, there is a Moscow, Idaho, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. <laughs> now that uh, now that I think about it, which and uh, actually they've got some great wine over there. I, I have had some <laughs> over there. It's an excellent place for wine. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, uh, but it's you know, it's like it's just like this this prolonged fantasy. Um, That's all it is. It is never going to happen, and yet they really think it's a neat idea. So there will be, there will continue to be referenda, and it will continue to do nothing. Uh, even when they met with some right wing members of the Idaho legislature a couple of years ago, the most that the Idaho people would say was, "Well, that's interesting." <laughs> Yeah, well, and as I understand, uh, just this year there was a resolution in February to uh, discuss the idea. Mm, <laughs> uh, it wasn't that. even a discussion; it was literally, "Can we have the discussion?" Right. And they said yes, and then they okay. didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're uh, too busy banning books and uh, outlawing uh, um, trans people. Yeah. Well, and actually, let's let's talk about that. So, yeah, books. Books have make, become suddenly very controversial in Idaho. Um, as and, with everywhere else, as with everywhere right. else. Um, yeah, the, the culture wars are uh, uh, running hot as ever here. Uh, in the Boise area, fortunately, it's gone fairly well. Uh, there was an attempt to... Uh, oust the library board, as I recall, and it went nowhere in, uh, not in Boise, but in nearby Nampa, um, or Meridian, I think it was Meridian, uh, when there was a library board meeting that uh, one group of crazies wanted to storm, uh, everyone else heard about it and uh, outnumbered them 10 to 1. Uh, so at least in the same part of Idaho, uh, libraries are safe, but in other parts of the state, uh, there have been 
a couple of libraries that were shut down because there was just no more funding or no one to work at them. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very sad. And uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the legislature last year passed a couple of absolutely crazy bills in the House that fortunately went nowhere in the Senate because the Senate so far is still tends to have more of the uh, the, the pro-business normal Republicans rather than the crazies. Um, but but this year they they did manage to do the uh, trans uh, uh, the, the transgender uh, excuse me, the uh, gender affirming health care ban, uh, which is just awful. Uh, they also passed that bizarre bill uh, outlawing travel to Oregon or other states to get an abortion. Uh, so people could be put in jail, not for crossing the state line, but for traveling toward Oregon or Washington to get an abortion with a minor who wasn't their own child in the car. So a, a parent wouldn't be arrested, but an aunt could. <laughs> and it was signed by uh, Brad Little, who, despite being one of the more sane, uh, comparatively, um, conservative Republicans, knows that he's got the crazies always looking for a chance to go after him. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. And uh, I mean, it's when you I mean, think about it, just compare the, the Democrats. I mean, <laughs> in Idaho, you, you said you know nothing about the Democratic politics in Idaho because we never hear from them. <laughs> Sadly, it's it's true. I mean, we uh, there are definitely uh, Democrats who are very good, especially in the Boise area. And they do well. They have their voice in the the legislature, and they have managed to keep some sanity in the place. But as far as being any kind of a counterweight to the crazies, I don't know what they would do, frankly, because there's just not enough of us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because, I mean, the, the Boise metro area has about 750,000 people in um, mm -hmm. Idaho has a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and but you know what? Though? I mean, I think it is is worth pointing out that these uh, a lot of this craziness probably does. I mean, you were saying that it does. They're trying to counteract that they believe a lot of people have moved in into you know the the business in Berkeley section of of Idaho, mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to do something to sort of disenfranchise them. That, yes, um, we aren't quite to the point of uh, where was it? oh uh, of of Texas where they uh, uh, took away the elections board from uh, the biggest county um, out uh, for for Houston. Um, yeah, they just said no, nope, you can't have your own elections board anymore. <laughs> but you know they're thinking about it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, and but I mean, I guess uh, you know, nationally, uh, probably the the only Democrat that from Idaho that anyone had ever heard of, and and this is just barely, is Paulette Jordan, uh, mm -hmm. who ran for governor in twenty eighteen, and I guess she ran for um, Senate in twenty twenty. Uh, no idea what she's doing nowadays, though. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's uh, it's. A almost a suicide run for an Idaho for an Idaho Democrat to run for major office. Um, I don't know when our last. Let's see, yeah, I, I can't recall when we last had a statewide uh, Democrat in a major office. Hmm. I guess what Frank Church. You know? Well, uh, right, Frank Church was certainly the uh, the last uh, senator from Idaho. We did have a. Democrat who was uh, elected, I think, for one term after, after, boy, I don't remember. 
we had a one-term Democrat within the last 10 years uh, in mm -hmm. one of the two congressional districts, uh, but uh, lost again. Um, you know, former Idaho Representative uh, Raul Labrador, who uh, is now the state attorney general. It's it's crazy. He's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and one of the big uh, sort of progenitors of that craziness is the Idaho Freedom Foundation, right? Um, they are very big. They set a lot of, um, they managed to have an outsized voice uh, in Idaho politics. Um, they were central to the protests against uh, COVID lockdowns. Not that we ever actually had them against uh, any kind of uh, reaction to COVID, um, against uh, masks, against any kind of public health orders. Um, they and Ammon Bundy uh, did things like uh, protesting outside the home of a police officer who arrested someone for violating the uh, lockdown. Just nuts. Uh, there was a public burning of masks uh, on the uh, steps of the Idaho Capitol. So that was a good use of uh, fire and plastic. And the Freedom Foundation is, uh, they just have all sorts of wonderful ideas about how we can uh, make Idaho more right wing. They have uh, an annual freedom index that tells you uh, which members of the legislature are uh, uh, sufficiently to the right. Uh, they're very involved in the school censorship uh, business and their blog most recently is running articles about great Americans during June because the Democrats are doing something else during June. They won't even name pride. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is their little joke. It's called pride in America. Uh, so they have pro uh, profiles of great Americans, uh, George Washington, Elon Musk, and Charles Lindbergh. The article on Charles Lindbergh talks about what a great patriot was he was and what a great aviator. Doesn't have one word about the anti-Semitism or the America first thing. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. well he helped us stay out of World War II until it was until it was unavoidable. And then he was I a great see. patriot during the war. Nothing about his medal from Hitler. Because <laughs> <laughs> why would you mention that? It's, it's yeah, not like yeah. we had not like there's anything wrong with being a Nazi. No, no, there is, according to them, there is not. And uh, it's just a difference of opinion. You know, why mm -hmm. would you, why would you cancel someone for being a Nazi? Oh, right. Uh, and I guess uh, there's, you guys also had uh, some people trying to start up a Patriot Front um, group up in uh, Coeur d'Alene that I guess they got arrested recently. Oh, right. right. Yeah, they, it At wasn't the that event. they were, were running one, but, uh, but yeah, they, they came in from uh, all around With the guns. West yeah. and uh, tried to uh, uh, march at a uh, pride parade last year. Um, I'm not sure whether they were armed with anything more than, you know, clubs and, and the usual armor and, and uh, shields. Uh, but yeah, they, uh, were certainly a nasty group and uh, most of them were convicted. And the fun thing of course, is that now on uh, Elon's Twitter, you'll be told that if you mention the uh, Patriot front, you'll be told, Oh wait, no, they're just an FBI front group. Yeah. I've seen people say that. And, and um, I've asked people that and according to them, it's obvious that they are. It's because, just obvious they are, yeah. Because they, they have clothes. clean, they have clean clothes and uniforms, <laughs> and that, that makes them be. FBI. That must be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and it's like, well, hey, I guess you never heard of Mormons. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, and and uh, I, I don't know, but you know, I, I have to say though, I I do still feel like though that. Um, I mean, you know, we, we, we discussed Paulette Jordan, you know, earlier in the episode that, um, I mean, she did a lot better than a Democrat has for governor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in quite some time. And, um, 
And, you know, a lot of people are moving to Idaho, to the Boise area and uh, in Sun Valley. And uh, I mean, you know, is this just a, do these people see the writing on the wall from themselves, do you think? Well, it's hard to say. I think that so far Idaho has been lucky in having more sane people than crazies. Um, going back to the Aryan nations, uh, there were certainly Nazis there, but there was also a very, very strong pushback from the Coeur d'Alene uh, community. Uh, you still see bumper stickers that say, Idaho is too great for hate. Um, in fact, in Boise, we now have, uh, down by the library, we have an Anne Frank memorial that was put up by people who were disgusted by the reputation that Idaho got uh, from the Aryan nations. So I like, I, without sounding like a Pollyanna, I like to think that at some point sanity will prevail, but whew, we're Hard going to, to go through some when. stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a group out there called Reclaim Idaho. Have you, uh, you have you ever heard of those guys? I don't know. There's a Twitter group called the Idaho 98% that I certainly like the, uh, the, the name of uh, that does what it can to oppose the, uh, the crazies out there, or at least to point out that they are spouting nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, probably what's going to have to happen is that, uh, you know, the, it's like, uh, people who live in more progressive parts of the country, I think it's hard for them to really grasp the dilemma that progressives in these reds in red states have. Is right. that you know you the national party has Why don't largely you just move. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I live That's here. Right. I'm an American. I have the right to live where I want to live, or I have to live where my job is, you know, right. or whatever it is, uh, or right. my, where my family is, or whatever. Um, and, you know, and, and, and the National Democratic Party did really, and this is part of why I'm doing this series, is that, you know, the National Democratic Party, for a brief few years when Howard Dean was the chairman, mm -hmm. you know, actually had a 50-state strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, but once uh, Obama was able to come in and put his own people in, he was like, okay, you know, we don't need that because... I, I can win without this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's just save our money, guys. Mm -hmm. um, and let's not do that. And so as a result, I mean, you know, a lot of Democrats in red states feel like no one gives a shit about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, is that, you think that's a fair assessment? It feels that way sometimes. Um, I don't know about uh, missing out on national attention, but although that is reality. <laughs> a lot of it comes to, I think that there was this, so there was a book that came out. Um, it was uh, around the time that Obama first came on the scene. It was called The Emerging Democratic Majority. Um, and the thesis of the book, um, people only took the first half of the thesis. <laughs> <laughs> the thesis of the book was, if Democrats can take their existing electorate um, and then add on a new group of people who are college educated and um, and are you know uh, Hispanic or Asian uh, who are you know immigrating in, then they'll have a majority. Mm -hmm. But they basically the National Democratic Party, especially under Hillary Clinton, um, they basically kind of lopped off that first part of keeping the existing constituency. <laughs> And they're like, "Hey, well, we got we have the emerging majority here. Let's go for it, guys. We we're uh, let's put all our money into the presidential races." I mean, mm -hmm. I think that might be part of it. Also, is that you know they were shut out. The Democrats were shut out of the presidency for 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 twelve years mm -hmm. during Reagan and Bush and uh, Bush forty one, uh, and they kind of you know I I think to some degree it kind of made them miss their priorities that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They took Congress for granted, um, but they, and so they became obsessed with the presidency and kind of lost the. I the absolutely point. agree with that. And also the, the left has, the Democrats, the left have simply 
fallen down on what the right was so good at going back to when I was in college, um, when the right was making sure that there were right wing people running for school boards and for local uh, county officials. And you just don't see that kind of organizational effort on the ground from Democrats. We should be doing the school boards. We need to be doing uh, state legislatures at every level, not just every four years saying, okay, let's, uh, let's elect a president because we can probably do that. But without the building, the party building that goes on with uh, the lower level efforts, you just don't have, oh God, I'm going to use a sports metaphor. You don't have a bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that also, and it's that, you know, they're missing the the crucial aspect of the American electoral system, which is that, you know, it's deliberately like I always hear people complain about, oh, the electoral college is unfair. The Senate is unfair. And it's like, guys, kind of been that way for more than 200 right. years. Right. <laughs> so Designed that so you can you can complain about that and you can complain about, you know, various senators not doing what you want or you can try to do something about it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I guess to some degree, you know, the the greater Idaho fantasy of, of the Western <laughs> right wing is it's almost like there is a left wing version of that. And that's, you know, let's we're going to expand the Senate. We're going to have Puerto Rico as a state and we're going to have D.C. as a state and we're going to break up California and we're going to do this and that. And it's like, OK, well, when are you going to get the power to do this? Right, stuff? right, exactly. Who's going to give it to you? Exactly. The other thing, though, about it is that you know, so the American political system is not just you know the Senate's bias, obviously, and mm -hmm. uh, for for smaller population states, um, but also you know just the fact that, I mean, you know, people on the on the left talk about how the presidential system should be about people rather than land, right? You, you know, you see those maps mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, look at all this land that voted for Republicans. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that still does actually matter. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if you- It's it, what we've got. It's what? It's what we've got. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're not going to, to change that anytime soon. Yeah, well, and it's, it, it's also that, you can't like let's say you do somehow let's say there is a enough population shifting mm -hmm. such that you know the the blue states quote unquote end up to having a permanent um house and presidential majority mm -hmm. um that's going to be problematic that you're creating a country that is just so incredibly geographically polarized mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and it's and not just for the for the sake of national unity in the that the Senate's not going to be that way, number one. Mm -hmm. And then number two, you're creating a huge problem for people who do live in urban areas like Boise or like uh, let's say Albuquerque, New Mexico, or you know, Texas Democrats. Um, you, you know, and you, you can't just sit, wave a wand and say, Oh, well, you know, we'll have a national divorce and that's like <laughs> guys. <laughs> You are literally probably, you know, consigning a third of the people who you consider your political compatriots. Exactly. exactly. You're consigning them to a confederacy. It, that that's what you're going to do. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's not that we it's it's not that we need to uh, you know redo secession and let that go. For, we need to do reconstruction 2.0 and do it right. <laughs> Although how yeah. we do that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it you, you can't start it until you start talking about it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And that's just you know, and and because I mean, because that that is it's actually an opportunity when you think about it, because mm -hmm. you know the the Republican Party in these different states, um, and not just the National Party, but at the state level, um, you know, even I mean, here in California where I live, I mean, the Republican Party here is nuts. Like, oh, yeah they're insane like they're actually probably more insane than the national republican party mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and you know so but especially in red states where the you know people the majority of people had been voting like in idaho i i think mm -hmm. since uh the 90s for for um, uh actually no since lbj i think he was the last democrat to win idaho 
in a presidential election. Um, right. Uh, you know, like, so you've had one party rule in many states in the country for decades. And what has it gotten people? You know, it hasn't, it, there's all kinds of problems. And, and it, there's, you should think of that as an opportunity if you're a progressive mm -hmm. um, to come in and help people and say, look, you have been abandoned. Like that's, that's the thing people don't get about, about Trump and the appeal of Trump is that the reason why he has such loyalty from people is because Republicans abandoned these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and, you know, he doesn't really care about them, but at least he pretends to. Right, uh, right. And they, and they love He's him. He's given up so much for them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how they feel, and mm -hmm. and but but you know what though, like at least he's acknowledging that they exist, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and Very that's you know kind of hard to say that the national Democrats have really done that. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at where they put their ad dollars and and their campaign yeah. dollars, yeah, yeah. Well, so we're coming up to the end here, um, and I think we've hopefully covered all the all the major points here and uh, other Idahoans will have to chime in if we, if they think we missed anything, but um, I mean, do you have any, any parting thoughts for, for the audience um, as we wrap it up here? When you think about the polarization in the red States and the lunacy, remember that there is never a 100% vote uh in any of these red states in idaho democrats do get 20 and 30 percent of the vote that's the same in other red states too and we can't just forget the people the, the the progressives in the red states okay yeah no i think that's a good point good point um all right so uh you oh are... and read one cat you should definitely read onecat.com that's a Yes, there we yeah. go. I'll, I'll put that on the screen there. Yes, uh, W O N K E T T E. Yes, dot uh, com. For those who are listening. Yes. Um, all right, and then uh, I guess you are, at least until it falls apart. You're on Twitter over uh, at Doctor Zoom. That's with a K though, not with a C. Mm -hmm. um, so people can follow you on there as well. Yes. All right, uh, Marty Kelly. Thanks for being on Theory of Change too. Well, thank you very much. All right. So that is the program for today. I appreciate everybody for watching or reading or listening. And you can go to theoryofchange.show to get all the other episodes. And if you're a paid subscriber, you can get full access to video, audio, and transcript of all the episodes. And I do appreciate everybody who supports the show like that. We're not subsidized by billionaires or universities or anything like that. No, we're made possible by people like you. And so please do share um, the show as well. And if you can subscribe financially, that definitely is appreciated as well. But uh, please do tell your friends and family about the show and what we're doing here. I do appreciate it very much. I'll see you next time.